When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. You might have looked at the back of a food label before and seen a really big list of something we call the ingredients list. So this is the ingredients list. And we can call it the ingredients list or we can kind of call it the food additives list. So food additives. More or less, I mean, those two words mean more or less the same things. Because what a food additive actually is, is something that you add into food to give it a different type of flavor or property or whatever else. So food, the word add is in there. So just things that you add into food. And it's usually a reason why you would add it as well. The reason why I'm mentioning all this is because the actual dot point says, gather and process information from secondary sources to explain the use of acids as food additives. So we have to go through the reasons why we actually use acids as food additives. I mean, there's already two, in this example, there's already two acids you can pinpoint. There would be folic acid, which is a vitamin, so we would add it for improving nutrition, and lactic acid, which often gets to use in fermentation, especially when it comes to milk products. But I will go over actual examples now. So the ones I'll go over, there are four reasons why, that I'll go over. There are more reasons why we might use acids, but it just says, you know, talk about a couple different types of examples. And one of the really main reasons is it's used as a food preservative. So preservative is something that preserves food. So if you, for example, if we have some tinned or canned food, this might be your tinned or canned food, there might be lots of different types of, uh, this, has to, this has to hold for, this has to, this might be stored for many months or years. And if we're unlucky, you know, there might be bacteria that get in there, there might be, you know, just bad pathogens in general. And what can we do to kill those bacteria? Well, if we add an acid into it, that might actually change the environment and the bacteria itself might not be able to survive that environment. So by adding acids, we often can preserve food. That means we can actually kill bad bacteria, whatever else could usually make food go bad. Now some examples would be acetic acid and propanoic acid. But both of these are examples of weak acids. And you might be, um, hopefully you won't be surprised, but when it comes to food additives, we usually only use weak acids. So why would we only use weak acids? The reason why is because weak acids are obviously not too damaging for a human being. So even if we just put them here in as food preservatives, that would still mean we often would eventually eat or drink those acids. If they were strong acids, that would obviously mean that we might be able to die from that. So by using only weak acids, it means, or at least very dilute strong acids, that means we can not get harmed. Because I mean, when it comes to stuff that's in food, we want to make sure we don't harm ourselves when eating. So most of these different acids we can find in there are usually quite weak. And examples that are used as food preservatives are your acetic acid, which is your nica, and your propanoic acid. This just gets used for bread in many cases. Remember, the dopamine says explain the use of acids as food additives. So you would have to say, okay, they get used as food additives. And the reason why is because acids make the environment more acidic and that would kill any bacteria that would be in the actual food and it allows us to store it for longer periods of time. So that would be the kind of answer you would have to be looking at, not just naming them and saying, okay, they get used as food preservatives, but go through why exactly. And then a couple examples of flavor enhancers. So these are the ones that either make it taste better or change the taste. So we've got citric acid here, citric acid, and you can actually buy in a big pack. And one of the reasons why we use citric acid and malic acid is to enhance flavor. And citric acid is obviously found in sort of lemons, for example. And lemons tend to be quite sour. So we often like to, if we want to have, for example, sour candy, or we just want to make anything a bit more sour in general, you know, even stuff like you know, um, orange juice or things that are similar to that, they should be sour. So by adding this citric acid, we change the flavor, we enhance the flavor by making it more sour. Because that's the main property of citric acid, it makes things more sour. And the same thing with malic acid is also, it's found, I think malic acid was found in apples, and malic acid can be used also to make things more sour. I'm pretty sure malic acid is actually even more sour than citric acid, which is funny because malic acid, I mean, apples aren't more sour than lemons, but I'm guessing there must be just less of it in the actual apple than citric acid. But yeah, both of these are used to enhance flavors, and the way you can enhance it, and this was just mentioning, this was the identify, but it says explain, the way you can explain that is 
Citric acid makes things more sour, so we want to have a food that is more sour. We add more citric acid to it to make it even more sour than it's, than it, as it's meant to be. So that would enhance the flavor. Then we can use to make different types of milk products. So milk is, for example, the liquid. But how do we make yogurt? Well, we make yogurt by using lactic acid. And as lactic acid ferments the milk, so it ferments the milk and makes it from that liquidy normal type of milk into yogurt. We use it for both for yogurt and cheese. So lactic acid gets used because it can actually help ferment liquid milk into yogurt. And yogurt is obviously a relatively popular product. Therefore, therefore we want to make have a way that we can make it. And we use lactic acid to make it. And then we have rising agents. Uh, rising agents, these are things that help make different, or usually baking products, rise. So you, if you have, for example, the dough itself, the dough might be flat. So it might be flat initially, but after time it will become normal shaped. And it could be you know, your cake or your muffin, whatever else. That usually happens in the oven. And the reason why it happens is because that cream of tartar, it helps us to, it helps the make these air holes in it. So it, it increase the, I think it's the carbon dioxide production, increases the carbon dioxide production, and that increase in carbon dioxide production produces these air holes. And that's the reason why this will go from that doughy texture into its fully baked texture. So the cream of tartar, which is a common name, the scientific or the actual bait name for it is potassium hydrogen tartrate. tartrate. So this is the systematic name or the scientific name. And cream of tartar, we can find that in a supermarket. But yeah, it's actually a potassium hydrogen tartrate. And it's so it's a food additive. And the reason why it gets used is it because it helps make baking products rise and get its normal shape. So I go over the top one again. We need to be able to explain the use of acids as foods. So first identify where they get used. For example, acetic acid, propanoic acid it gets used as food preservatives. And then why? Well, because they kill bacteria, which means things get stored for longer. Citric acid and malic acid it gets used as fluid flavor enhancers. The reason why is because both these acids make things more sour. That's a property of acids. And thereby we can use it into things in, in products, food products that are meant to be sour, such as sour candy or different types of juices. And by adding citric acid or malic acid, we make it even more sour. We can use lactic acid to ferment milk products. And then we can go from liquidy to yogurty. We can use cream of tartar to rise, make our different baking products rise. And name, name for, the scientific name for cream of tartar was potassium hydrogen tartrate. And the reason why we can use this is because it will produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct of its action. And thereby those carbon dioxide will produce bubbles in the actual food. And those bubbles will give it that spongy feeling. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.